Welcome to Inside Gaming, I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. So the beta for Overwatch 2 is underway and a lot of players are taking a look at the much anticipated sequel that quite frankly, Blizzard has a lot riding on. And this is a situation where there's good news and there's bad news. Let's talk about the good news first. So there was a big surge of initial interest in Overwatch 2. It set a Twitch viewership record for the franchise with more than 1.5 million concurrent viewers. That is a lot. That is great. They may have paid some streamers to gas up some interest there, but it worked. Now, that was the good news. The bad news is that almost all of those people did not stick around. As of a week later, Overwatch 2 had lost 99% of that audience. So, that's a lot. And even though every game tails off after an initial surge of interest, that is a huge drop and not great news for Blizzard. As for reactions to the beta, well, they're mixed. Some people liked it, but there were a lot of complaints. One of the biggest is that the game doesn't feel like a full-fledged sequel to Overwatch 1. Dunkey even called it Overwatch 1.1, adding, you can never escape the feeling that you're still just playing Overwatch 1. He complained about long queue times. A lot of people talked about that. And he said that none of the core issues have been addressed. He also remarked that the footage from Overwatch 2 was basically indistinguishable from the first game. Now, the biggest change in gameplay from Overwatch one to two is that matches are now 5v5 instead of 6v6 and there's only one tank now instead of two. Vice ran an article saying that Overwatch 2 only makes the biggest problems from Overwatch worse. They wrote, the lack of another tank to soak damage, the increase in damage capabilities across the board, and the overwhelming dominance of hit scan weapons has made the game feel extremely scrappy. That scrappiness makes it a headshot fest where strategy begins to collapse under the weight of all the people trying to kill you at any given moment. They said that the PvP beta feels like a very significant patch filled with character reworks in line with the seasonal patches of dozens of other video games. Now, I solicited some opinions on Twitter from people who have played the beta. Here are some of what I had heard, and thanks to everybody who responded. Archie Atkinson said they enjoyed the beta, saying, the game itself is fun. I think the switch to 5v5 and some of the balance changes significantly improved the game. But Atkinson complained about the long queue times and said a lot of the characters and the game as a whole feels no different. It almost feels lackluster and like a larger update than a push for a sequel. Sam Galloway told me that it feels like the same game with a half-finished new coat of paint. They added, it's still fun at its core, but Blizzard hasn't changed or fixed it enough to fully drag me back in. Maybe if the PvE mode is amazing, I'll think about it, but Overwatch 2 still has all the same problems as Overwatch 1. And a veteran Overwatch player, Grim, told me that the game plays inherently different and quicker with one less tank. It's faster, but I'm not sure if it's better yet. And now all of this is not great news for Blizzard, which is currently still engulfed in scandal and would much rather be talking about Overwatch 2 than sexual harassment issues. But to do that, you need a strong game. And so far, it feels like Overwatch 2 isn't differentiating itself enough from its predecessor. All right, on to the rest of the news. We have a spicy new development in the Activision Blizzard Microsoft merger. Now, there has been a lawsuit from some New York City pension funds. They have sued Activision claiming that CEO Bobby Kotick rushed to finalize the takeover bid from Microsoft so that he could escape liability for his own misconduct. The suit says, given Kotick's personal responsibility and liability for Activision's broken workplace, it should have been clear to the board that he was unfit to negotiate a sale of the company, but it wasn't. Now, this is in reference to previous reports from the Wall Street Journal, which said that Kotick knew of misconduct at the company. The lawsuit from these pension funds claimed that Microsoft's offer of $95 a share undervalues Activision Blizzard and added that the deal with Microsoft allows Kotick and his fellow directors a means to escape liability for their egregious breaches of fiduciary duty. The suit requests a list of documents from Activision, including material related to the deal and info on five possible buyers that were cited in Activision's official description of the sale. They also request board memos and a whole lot more. It looks like a franchise that the US Army has been using as a recruiting tool is no more. We're talking about America's Army Proving Grounds that shut down this week after the franchise. America's Army in general was around in various forms and games for 20 years. The free-to-play Counter-Strike-ish game had been free on PC and consoles, and in a post announcing the shutdown, the team behind the game wrote that it represented the first large-scale use of game technology by the US government as a platform for strategic communication and recruitment, and the first use of game technology in support of US Army recruiting. They 
added, as time has passed and America's army has fulfilled its mission, it's time to shift our focus to other and new innovative ways to assist the army with comps and recruitment. Vice reported that the franchise hasn't had a major release in 10 years and its free to play model has obviously been copied by a ton of other games at this point. All right, so you guys remember Wii Sports, right? The game that came bundled with the Wii, caused a bunch of broken televisions. Oh, and the Switch version is doing that now too, by the way. Well, apparently we have former Nintendo of America president Reggie fils to thanks for Wii Sports. In his new book, he said that he suggested bundling Wii Sports in with the Wii, but there was apparently a lot of pushback from none other than gaming legend Shigeru Miyamoto. He told fils and another staffer who suggested the bundle, neither of you understands the challenges of creating software that people love to play. This is something we constantly push ourselves to do. We do not give away our software. Nintendo president Satoru Iwata initially also turned down the idea, but eventually Wii Sports was bundled in with the Wii everywhere except for Japan, where it was sold separately. And it was arguably a huge reason for the Wii's success. It went on to sell more than 100 million units across the world. All right, so I love this story. There is seriously no limit to what modders can do these days. So last month, the gaming deals king Wario64 tweeted out a deal for the Fisher Price Laugh and Learn Game and Learn controller. You've probably seen this little toy controller. He joked that the controller was, quote, perfect for Elden Ring. Funny, right? Uh, fun little tweet. Well, one modder who goes by Rudism took up the challenge, and in just a few weeks after Wario64's tweet, he modded it to be a fully functioning Xbox controller and, of course, filmed himself playing Elden Ring on it. What's next? Well, someone suggested that he beat Forza Horizon 5 with a Fisher Price Super Speedster steer wheel, Rudism seemed down for the challenge though. Who knows? I'm not betting against him. I love this kind of stuff. It's awesome. All right, time for a five second review. I thought this was going to have Rogue from the X-Men. Nope, it didn't. Just kidding. It's fun. I like roguelikes. It's a good roguelike. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Songs of Conquest. This is a turn-based strategy adventure game that fuses RPG, tactical combat, and kingdom management. Raise mighty armies, wield ancient magic, and conquer distant lands to build an empire that bards will sing about for centuries. Comes to PC May 10th. Next up, Brigandine. The continent of Runarcia is home to six major powers with more than 40 bases, 100 knights, and 50 types of monsters. That's weirdly specific, guys. Select a ruler, organize knights and monsters into troops and conquer enemy bases. Comes to PC May 11th. Source of Madness is a side-scrolling dark action roguelite set in a twisted Lovecraftian inspired world powered by procedural generation and AI machine learning. Boy, that is all the buzzwords. Take on the role of a new acolyte as they embark on a nightmarish odyssey. Comes to PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch May 11th. Achilles Legends Untold in the conflict between Hades and Ares in this Souls-like action RPG. Battle Gods defeat mythological creatures and gather resources alone or in co-op in Achilles Legends Untold. Comes to PC May 12th. Cantata is a character-driven tactical strategy game that puts you in the middle of a spiritual, pragmatic war for survival. Play as one of nine commanding officers from one of the three factions and leverage your faction's unique powers and abilities to slowly expand your hold on this alien world. Comes to PC May 12th. The Centennial Case, a Shijima story, is a new, unique mystery adventure game. The game blends beautiful yet thrilling live action footage with mysteries to solve, creating highly immersive gameplay. It comes to PC, PS5, PS4, and Switch May 12th. Flippin' Cactus is a 2D, brutal action vendetta game with retro-inspired graphics and an 80s vibe, featuring a spiky hero with a thorny past. It comes to PC May 12th. And finally, Evil Dead the Game. Ooh. Sorry for my Ash impression. Step into the shoes of Ash Williams or his friends from the iconic Evil Dead franchise and work together in a game loaded with over-the-top co-op and PvP multiplayer action. Play as a team of four survivors exploring, looting, managing your fear, and finding key items to seal the breach between worlds in a game inspired by all three original Evil Dead films. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch May 13th. Ooh, did you hear Sam Raimi, who did Evil Dead, might do Spider-Man 4. Oh, that would be so awesome. All right, that is all the news we got for you this week, guys. I hope you're having a great weekend. We'll see you soon.